Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. Christy Alonzo, new documentary uh, premiering this weekend on Netflix uh, from our good friend Werner Herzog. Right, it's a Werner Herzog documentary about volcanoes, which is exactly what you want it to be. It is Werner Herzog talking about the volcano does not care if you are standing precariously on its lip. The um, magma. Right, the magma. <laughs> magma. Um, I, I wish I had seen this on a big screen because I, I saw it on a screener. I wish I had seen it because like the sound design and the imagery and it's just, it's everything you want a Werner Herzog volcano documentary to be. Take a look. The sun dimmeth, the land sinketh, gusheth forth steam and gutting fire. To the heaven soar the hurtling flames of the mighty gods, the engulfing doom. It is hard to take your eyes off the fire that burns deep under our feet. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. <laughs> cut to the chase. That's that's what you get here. It's like it's molten lava, and who doesn't want to see that? You know, I, I'm not. Uh, there's something about Werner Herzog's documentary style that I'm not super in love with. Because he's so he inserts himself so much into it. Well, but the thing is. I think there are a lot of first-person documentarians who are totally I inserting themselves into it, Michael and Moore. and Michael Moore, for instance, or you know um, some Morgan Spurlock, and going back to like you know Sherman's March, like Ross McKelvey, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and that's a style of documentary, and yeah, it can be self-indulgent, but sometimes it's it, it is a very sort of personal thing. And then you have your sort of super detached, like Frederick Wiseman, I'm not talking, yeah. you don't see me, yeah. nothing, you know, kind of documentary style. And then Herzog, I always feel, occupies this uncomfortable space where he, he narrates and he's occasionally on camera, but he doesn't really want to commit to it being about his point of view ever, even though obviously it is because it's his movie. So I don't know, I, I, I feel like it's this... It's this weird middle position where it's either like, all right, make this all Werner Herzog all the time, or <laughs> shut up and get out of the way and just tell the story. Well, the Although Werner Herzog. I, I do love his narration. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I feel like, I mean, aesthetically, tonally, it's unmistakably a Werner Herzog movie in, in his fascination with danger and death and daring and and remote parts of the planet yeah. and, and just the sort of weird things of nature, you know. He, he really he, he's so inquisitive and he's so mm. curious about the corners of the earth and ways of life that you wouldn't know about and, and you know historical context and so I think there's there's a, a kind of almost a boyish kind of inquisitiveness despite his age and despite his stature I get the feel, feeling that he's just giddy to learn what he learns and then to share it with us in his own unmistakable style and so he he goes to various places around the globe. He goes to, he, well, he's in Vanuatu, he's in Iceland, he's in North Korea. The whole right, North yeah. Korea section <laughs> is really creepy, as you might imagine. Where else does he go? Uh, well, this is actually a Ethiopia. sequel. It's a sequel to his Antarctica documentary. Encounters at the End of the Earth. Uh, right, which yeah. is where he met Colin... Clive, Clive Oppenheimer. Volcanologist Clive Oppenheimer. Clive Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Not to be confused with symbologist <laughs> Robert Langdon, who was in Inferno. <laughs> <laughs> which is a whole other movie. They're different people. Uh, uh, yes, and Oppenheimer <laughs> actually gets a co-director credit here, but yeah, so that's where he met this guy and, and sort of now follows him around on his travel to various volcanoes, and they keep telling you, this is one of only three active volcanoes on the planet <laughs> that you can peer into, and we peer into all of them. And that's, and that's really cool, you know, and I, did, I learned a lot. I didn't realize that Indonesia has more volcanoes than any other country on, on the planet. Yeah, no. I didn't know that. I it, learned a lot. It's very uh, beautiful. Volcanoes are cool. Ask any sixth grader, you know, <laughs> and, and this is, I think, a, a movie for kids I, in a lot of ways, yeah. just because, you know, the volcanoes are those, one of those sort of extremes of the planet that you're interested in when you're sort of first learning about science and this movie just gets right in there. It you know? does, but it's also not just about volcanoes are cool. You know, no, it's obviously. about like a <laughs> cultural perspective as far as what volcanoes mean to different peoples around the yeah, globe. Yeah, how we've and, interpreted them right. over the years. And so like the whole North Korea section, which I mentioned earlier, um, they, they get access to it because Oppenheimer at Cambridge has a connection with somebody in North <laughs> Korea and Pyongyang, and so they're allowed to actually go in and shoot. Yeah. And so you realize, like, the volcano, this massive volcano in, in North Korea, is like the source of their cultural identity in a lot of ways. I had no idea because we just 
don't know as much about North Korean culture as we might about others. And so we were able to get a peek into that because of the connection. And, like songs are written about it and like giant, you know, murals, <laughs> giant worshipful murals of Kim Jong-il in front of the volcano. Like well, it was cool to learn and, that. And there's also like that island off the coast of Australia where they, they're not cannibals anymore, but the kids <laughs> still reenact the like how cannibals would capture you in the jungle and stuff. That you know? was cute though. Yeah, no, was, Again, they playful. Were adorable. They were adorable. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, he's, I, I, I give all credit to Herzog as, as, as a sort of a cultural anthropologist and, a, and somebody who, who, you're right, mm. he's, I think he is endlessly curious about stuff. It's more about his style of, there's so much Herzog in these movies, but there's not enough Herzog in these movies? I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I think I'm more used to, if you're gonna be that present in a documentary that your POV becomes part of it, and he never goes that far, he just wants to, Talking occasionally. He's a reporter. Be on camera. I, was I, he's I a guess. Reporter as I guess. To editorializing. I'm not sure that he's he's not in, inflicting his opinion on the stuff. He's like, this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> also, to mention really fast, Clive Oppenheimer, who is the, the star of this, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's. He's not like your Tweety professor. Like he's he's just He's a volcanologist. He's a volcanologist. Come on. <laughs> he has to blend in with the people. But it's um but he's kind of he's kind of fun and he you see as he's telling a story of why something matters to a certain place, a certain people, there's like a, a light in his eyes. You can mm. tell after all these years of doing it, he's still really like thrilled to discuss what he's learned and share how cool it is and, and so Please, um, he's somebody's finally asking him and it's Werner Herzog. You right. know. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. Your me life's about work that, has led to this moment. Right. You know. So um it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you, you, that's a good point you make that it, kids should see it. I, I watched it on my own, but I'm sure that my kid would have dug it. So and cool. yes, the noise and the, the visuals and anyway. So the, I'm the giving mechma. it yes, I'm giving it an eight point Five. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go seven. It's a it's okay. solid, you know, solid piece of work. It's good stuff. Um, you know, you're if, if if you have liked other Herzog movies, then this is will be in your sweet spot. Yes. Nobody gets eaten by a volcano here, by the no. way. Um, spoiler. So our number. I changed my number, so that makes it what now? Uh, that's five, that's a seven, a seven point eight. All right, and it's at eighty nine percent on the tomato meter. So you can watch this now. Find a giant giant TV screen and crank up the volume and enjoy Into the Inferno.